Howdy everybody, Trichole Steve with you here again, and today I'm going to uh, help a fellow triker out. His name is George Chase. He's a disabled uh, military veteran, and he has a son, a uh, tricycle, recumbent trike, and he's tricked it out with a lot of really neat stuff, and I'm going to post it here on this channel, and uh, uh, he started a new channel on trikes, and he has some really informative information, so I'm going to post it here to try to drive some traffic to his uh, website, help him out a little bit, and then you can watch this video here about 17 minutes long and see what he's done with this trike. I mean, he, this guy's really inventive, and I, I think you'll find a lot of uh, neat stuff here on his trike that you might want to do for yourself. So, and if you want to comment to this, um, I'll have a link below to George's uh, new YouTube channel, and uh, go on over there to his channel um, and... He has this video on his channel and make the comments on that video rather than here. If you want to say something to me, you can leave a comment here. But if you want to say something to George, um, it's best to put it on his channel. I mean, you can leave it here too and, and he can probably respond to it. But e either way, but I'm just letting you know that uh, uh, this is George and uh, not whole old Steve in this video. All right. Uh, enjoy the video. My name is George Chase. I'm a Vietnam vet, and I have a few health issues that don't allow me to ride a standard two-wheel bike anymore. This tadpole trike that's under this cover is going to show you that now I can still ride safely with the use of the tadpole trike. A few of my friends have told me that I should do a video showing all the custom things I put on my trike, so let's take a look. As you heard at the start, I turned the wireless anti-theft alarm off. This brick helps to keep the cover from blowing off the trike during windy conditions. This material is a large ATV cover, waterproof, that my wife and I adapted to fit my PVC frame under here. I used PVC to build a frame to hold this, this cover and uh, it's attached to the wall with a couple of brackets and to a pivot system. It allows me to lift it up, giving easy access to the trike. Under my trike, I have an old piece of scrap plywood, a couple pieces of board that allows the trike to roll in over the little bumpers and stop the front wheels before anything hits the wall over there. So it puts the trike in exactly the same place easily every time I move the trike back in to get positioned under the tarp. This is a Sunseeker EcoTad SX. It's a recumbent tadpole trike, meaning it has two front wheels and one rear wheel. This trike comes from the factory with an adjustable boom seat and handlebars and direct linkage steering. It has a seven speed derailleur, front locking disc brakes and 20 inch wheels with a 300 pound weight limit. Note the seat height. It's higher than most expensive trikes that have seats very close to the ground. Being higher, the seat is easier to get in and out of for us older guys. The Sunseeker is a good solid trike that won't break the bank. You can get the EcoTad shipped to your door at utahtrikes.com. Check them out. Check out my first big aftermarket add-on, the electric motor with pedal assist. This rear wheel hub motor is powered by a 48 volt lithium battery. It has a backlit display with controls located on the left handlebar. The 500 watt system has plenty of power to carry you anywhere. The 48 volt battery located here slides into a custom space on this rack. It has a key, turns it on and off. It also, key also locks the battery in place so you can protect it from theft. Now let's look at the e-assist controls. Here is the e-assist control unit mounted on the left handlebar for easy access. 
turn it on here at the bottom level, push and hold, and have your screen. This is your po your battery level, speed, different different uh, screens and power levels. So the up and down button changes the power levels from one through five, which give you more and more assist, and more and more speed. Here's the throttle on demand lever here. It has three operating modes and five power levels. Mode one, you can pedal a trike with no electric assist at all, just like a regular bike. Mode two, when you turn on the pedal assist feature, the electric motor will assist your pedaling depending on the power level you choose, as I showed before, one being low with very little assist and five being the most assistance and the biggest uh, uh, highest speed. Mode three, you can stop pedaling and just use the throttle on demand feature to supply all the power to the bike, no pedaling at all. Just by turning the throttle down, and you'll see. Now that's on, that's on uh, power level one. If you change that up to power level five, now when I put the throttle down, you can see. Now you wouldn't be going 28 miles an hour because I have the rear wheel off the ground here and I weigh 150 pounds. So that's going to slow it down some, but that's, uh, that's a pretty cool feature. So the electric assist feature is great for anyone wanting to get out and ride longer distances, especially if they fear running out of steam and not making it back home. It is also great to provide assistance for climbing hills or pedaling into a headwind. This allows anyone to increase their range to stay within their comfort level. How cool is that? This Cat Eye bike computer, located on the lower right handlebar, has a long life button cell battery. It records moving time, speed, top speed, average speed, trip miles, total miles traveled, as well as time of day. Push and hold the button to clear the trip info and to change screens. The distance and miles per hour feature of this unit are very accurate because you can program your actual tire circumference into the unit. This is a great little computer. These large platform catalyst pedals are so much more comfortable and efficient than standard bike pedals. They are much longer and have nice little pins for maximum foot grip. Center the pedal axle under your arch and your feet and legs will thank you. They are pricey but well worth every penny. I have three Apache hard-sided waterproof storage containers zip-tied to the rear rack. I got these at Harbor Freight. They're $15 to $45 depending on the size. They are lightweight and strong. These are a great addition for carrying tools, first aid kit, snacks or whatever. And as I said before, they're waterproof and they're also lockable. You can put a padlock through the here on each one of them and lock them completely safe. Most trikes don't have fenders, but I recommend you have fenders on all three wheels to keep you and your bike from getting wet and muddy. You also need to have a rear view mirror to see approaching traffic from behind. That's a must. And as many reflectors as you can. If you see a dog running towards you barking, just stop the bike. 99% of the time, the dog is gonna stop also. If they don't stop, grab your pepper spray. My trike has a mesh seat, but this Ventisit ventilating seat cushion makes things cooler and more comfortable on longer rides. This pull-out flag helps remind motorists that they are required to give you three feet of space when passing. It's mounted on an old telescoping radio antenna. A flag in the rear is necessary to warn approaching traffic that you're there. My friend Karen made this flag it slides in a piece of PVC pipe that's just zip tied onto the back end. Note the reflectors, the more the better. Now let's talk about my custom electrical system. I have many items that need battery power. I wanted to eliminate changing small batteries and taking them out to charge, so I added a 12 volt battery. This SEAL 12 volt battery supplies power to all the battery operated extras that consume between 3 and 12 volts DC. And it even supplies charging power to some of them as well. 
It is zip tied here on the frame behind the seat. I use a trickle charger with alligator clips to charge this battery. Note the e-bike controller mounted on the frame just in front of the battery. Here on the front boom I have my strobe light, my nighttime running light, my GPS, my digital voltmeter, the switch for my nighttime running light, and my horn. The lower ATV LED light is only for nighttime use as it's an energy hog. It's powered directly from the 12 volt battery. On top of that is a strobe light. It came with three AAA batteries, 4.5 volts. As with other accessories, I have removed those batteries and ran wires directly into this battery compartment by way of the DC voltage adapter to supply the 4.5 volts needed. I will cover those adapters later. This eliminates replacing small batteries. This old Garmin Nuvi GPS has a bike mode and it still works great. It comes with a cigarette lighter plug that provides 5 volts from a 12 volt battery. It is mounted on a RAM magnetic mount to the boom. My 12 volt automobile horn from Harbor Freight is mounted under the front boom and the horn button is on the right handlebar for quick access. This digital touchscreen voltmeter is to monitor my 12 volt battery. It shows state of charge and battery voltage. Here you see the rear facing strobe light. It operates on 3 volts DC from the 12 volt battery by way of the DC adapter. Next up is how this 12 volt power gets reduced and distributed. Here you can see I have mounted four cigarette lighter outlets to the back of my seat. These 12 volt receptacles provide power to six different accessories that require less than 12 volts each. By using a DC adapter in line, we can choose how much voltage goes to each circuit. These 12 volt outlets provide power to the front strobe light, 4.5 volts, rear strobe light, 3 volts, Garmin GPS, 5 volts, two Garmin radar units, the rear radar and the display screen, both use 5 volts each, as well as charging the bike alarm, also 5 volts. Here you can see one outlet that provides power to the two radar units using one receptacle. It has two 5 volt USB ports. On a side note, the bike alarm is mounted out of sight behind the seat. This is the DC to DC adapter. It allows you to select different voltages less than 12 volts. They come with a cigarette lighter plug and different output ends to fit your application. Simply turn the selector knob to the needed voltage. As you can see, they are not very big at all. Mounted on the back of the trike is the Garmin rear radar unit. It detects vehicles approaching from the rear and sends that information to the front display screen. Here is the radar display screen. You can also use your cell phone in place of this screen. Turn it on by pushing the button. The two red lights down here indicated uh, that they were checking the batteries of both the front and the back unit and they would flash when they're getting low on battery power. The little blue light indicates it's receiving a signal from the back unit. The green light represents your bike. So, as the vehicles approach, you will see a light, a white light here, and it will move towards the green light. The white light turns orange and then red as the vehicle is approaching faster. So each vehicle approaching will have its own white light, and you can have probably as many as five different white lights there approaching. This unit works flawlessly. The radar units have internal batteries requiring 5 volts DC. I have USB cables running from the 12 volt power supply in the back directly to these two units, eliminating removing them to charge. Of all the things I've added to my bike for safety, perhaps lights are the most important. Here are my front signal lights. Here are the rear signal lights in four-way flasher mode. 
All the signal lights are Bomba LED ATV motorcycle lights and are a great fit for use here on the trike. They operate directly from 12 volts just as they would in your car. The signal lights are controlled here with these two toggle switches. Right, notice the indicator light, and left signal lights, both front and rear. Then the four-way flashers are controlled with this toggle. So you have up for on, down for off. While we're here, note the horn button that goes to the horn you saw earlier. No wimpy little bell for me. I want to be heard loud and clear. Here's a trike carrier I designed and built. Greg, a buddy of mine, welded it together for me. It is three feet by four feet, and I use one inch angle iron as a frame with one and a quarter inch square tubing for the tongue. As you can see, it stores easily here in my carport, not taking up any floor space. I made the chocks from wood and sheet metal and they can be removed easily if the rack is needed for other things. This rack allows ample access to the trunk, even with a trike in place. We made a hitch riser to get the rack higher off the ground. The Buick is quite close to the ground, so we needed to raise it up some. Here's the rack on the car, ready for the trike. I made these ramps out of scrap 1x4 lumber and folded little pieces of sheet metal to make a clamp it would slide over the edge of the rack and hold it in place. It just slides right down over the edge of the rack, stays securely in place. To load the trike on the rack, simply lift the back wheel, push the trike up the ramp, lift the rear wheel over the chalk. The front wheels will go right into the front chalks as they should, easy peasy. I used a simple turnbuckle to hold the trike down in the center. This U-bolt is bolted to the frame. I made this little bracket to go down over the uh, boom and a bolt and a piece of rubber under the bracket to protect the paint. And you just tighten up the turnbuckle, lock it down, and the trike is pretty well locked in place. And just to uh, make everything really secure, I also use a set of cinch traps across both the front wheels and the back wheel, just to be extra careful. Well, I think that about covers it. I hope you found something interesting.